so we are moving on to substitution. And I think you're really going to like this area that we have here. This is skill number five, integration by substitution. This is where it gets like proper now, OK? So for some integrations involving a complicated expression, we can make a substitution to turn it into an equivalent integration that is simpler. We wouldn't be able to use the reverse chain rule on the following. So this thing that we're trying to integrate, which I'm just going to put a box around here just while we're talking about it, I cannot use the reverse chain rule here. Why can I not use the reverse chain rule? Why can I not consider a particular thing and then go from there? Mm, that's not why. Pardon? Good, because the thing that's inside this thing that we have here does not differentiate to x. What would have to be inside here that would change it, Hamza? What could I have inside this uh, radical, this square root, that would actually make it? Pardon? I could have an x squared. It could be x square root of 2x squared plus 5. That, I could do the reverse chain rule. This, I cannot do the reverse chain rule because the derivative of the thing that's inside the, the third or inside the bracket, if it was to the power of a half, is not x. The derivative of it is, is 2. So with this extra x is actually really, really getting in the way for us here. OK. We are going to try and do this by using a substitution. We are going to substitute u for 2x plus 5. OK. And what the aim here is to do is to completely remove any reference to x and to make the entire question about u. <laughs> which is what I feel like I have to do as a teacher all the time. So we'll have to work out x, and we're also going to have to work out what dx is so that we can substitute them in, OK? So step one, it says using substitution, work out what x and dx is, or a variant, depending on, on the context of the question, which will make a little bit more sense when we see some other ones. So I'm trying to work on this expression that I've got here. I'm trying to work on x, the square root, of 2x plus 5 dx. And the thing I've got to start with is that u is equal to 2x plus 5. So very easily, I can see that 2x plus 5 I can just replace with a u. But I need to think how I can replace the x. So I'm going to make x the subject of this. So that's going to be a u minus 5 all over 2 is what x is equal to. Cool. I can just do a little ticks when I've got things. Cool, I can now substitute something in in place of x. 2x plus 5 is just u, so I know what that is. But I need to find out what dx is. I need to find out what dx is. So I'm going to come across with this. I've got that u is equal to 2x plus 5. What options do I have? What can I even do with this that might produce a dx in some kind of way? Good, I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x. When I differentiate u with respect to x, this is why we've been so specific about that language in the past. What are we differentiating it with respect to? I'm going to differentiate u with respect to x, and I'm going to get du by dx. The right-hand side differentiates to? No, Hamza, get out of here. <laughs> so now I'm going to rearrange this to make dx the subject, OK? And it's going to behave a bit like a fraction would do. So if I multiply the dx up here, and then I divide by 2, I will get du over 2 equals dx. Just think about what I did there. I multiplied up by the dx, and I divided by 2. So I've got dx is equal to du over 2. Now I can go back over to what I've got over here, and now I actually know what dx is equal to as well. So this whole question is going to transform into something different. I'm now actually going to do step two, which is to actually do the substitution. Okay? So I am going to integrate instead. Maybe I should actually do this in the way I'd like you to do this. Um, I'm integrating x, the square root of 2x plus 5 dx. And I'm now going to actually say that that is equivalent to x, which is u minus 5 over 2, multiplied by 
u to the power of a half multiplied by du over 2. So it kind of looks like an integration. I guess the thing that looks a bit strange is that we don't have the du put right at the end, but we could easily have the du put right at the end there by just separating it from the dividing by 2 and writing it as a half du instead. Sadia, ask it, it's good. Can you do it as well either, that line again? Can you yeah, so what I've... Because this thing inside here, 2x plus 5 is u. So this is actually the square root of u. So it's just u to the power of a half. Yeah, it's, it's, there's so many things going on. It is so worth you asking things, even if it ends up being super simple, because it means you'll understand the rest of the question. Muzike? Yeah, I don't understand what, where does the du bit came in? Um, so you're about to see what will happen when, when we do a bit of simplifying, because we really want to have the du at the end, because that's the instruction that's telling us to integrate. Anika? Yeah, I suppose maybe what I could have done here is I could have said that it's a half du is equal to dx. Maybe I could have done that, and that might make things look a little bit nicer. So why don't I actually just change that for a second? But you, you can write it like this, but that's the same thing as multiplying it by a half du. Okay, what I've just rewritten it as is the same thing that we have there. What was that, sorry? Can you do a minus five? Yeah, so this, yeah, exactly. Equivalently, this is the same thing as a half u minus five. That's the same thing, but I'm going to remove that from the page because I think that might make the page a little bit more complicated, okay? So let's just simplify now what we've got written here. If I was going to simplify this whole expression, I have got on the numerator, so the things that are running along the top, I've got u minus 5, and I've got u to the power of a half times by 1. So I don't need to bother with that. And on the bottom, I've got a 2 and a 2. So I have a 4. And at the end, I have du. So you have to times the u to the half, actually. No. These are all just, these three expressions here are just being multiplied together. They're all just being multiplied together. And then you'll see what I've written in that blue box. I've said tip. If you have a constant factor, factor it out of the integral. So instead of that over 4 that I've got here, it's kind of making it look a bit messy. It's kind of like just getting in the way of things. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a quarter outside the front like this. And inside now, I'm just going to have this expression that I've got, which is u minus 5, u to the half du. We're basically done now. This expression is, we can integrate this. You could have done this if you were in year 12. Well, when you were in year 12, not if you were in year 12, OK? So we're very, very nearly there. What do I need to do before I can integrate this thing? Just expand the brackets. It's dead easy now. We've just got u to the power of, what's u times u to the half? Three over two. Yeah, u to the power of 3 over 2 minus 5u to the half. And that whole thing there is being integrated with respect to u. That's why we have to have the du at the end, because we're doing it to a different variable. So let's finish off. We have a quarter. Let's actually integrate this that we've got here. <coughs> so it will be u to the power of 5 over 2 when we increase the power by 1, if the board decides it wants to work. u to the power of 5 over 2. What do you have to multiply that by? 2 over 5. Remember, come on, this is year 12 integration, guys. We've just been doing reverse chain rule with trig, and now we're struggling with this. And what about uh, u to the power of a half? <laughs> that would have to be u to the power of 3 over 2. 2 over 3 times 5, which is 10 over 3, and then plus c. So we get all of these bits together. We've now got 2 over 20. So you get 1 over 10, u to the 5 over 2, minus uh, 10 over 12, which is 5 over 6. 5 over 6, u to the 3 over 2, plus c. And then don't forget to do this thing that we've got here. They didn't want to know it in terms of x, in u. They wanted to know it in terms of x. So it becomes 1 over 10. u 
is 2x plus 5. 2x plus 5 to the power of 5 over 2. Minus 5 over 6. 2x plus 5 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. What I'm going to do now is I am going to stop this video here and I want you to just read through this every single stage and I want you to think, what questions do I have for Mr. Bison about this example? What are the questions that I have here? And if you don't have any questions, make sure you understand every single step there, okay? Yeah, you have